AMD just announced their wildest GPU ever, and I've got specs, performance, and more, so let's get right to it. Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Okay, it's news time, and as you can see, just like the league said, AMD just announced their RX 7600 XT, and also like the league said, it comes with 16 gigabytes of memory. Basically, if you like to be one of the first to learn about new PC hardware, make sure you subscribe to Gamer Meld. Oh, and I'll have affiliate links to all of these announcements down in the description below for when they're released. They don't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Anyway, before I get to the specs, you'll notice this slide right here. AMD is basically comparing it to the pretty much ancient at this point RTX 2060. And don't worry, they are also going to compare it to the RTX 4060, but I'll get to that in just a second. The reason they're showing this is basically they're saying, hey, a ton of gamers are still on GPUs like the RTX 2060 and you can get quite a bit of a jump of performance if you switch to the 7600 XT. Moving on, we have specs. And right here, you'll notice this is the regular RX 7600, and here is the new 7600 XT. And right off the bat, unfortunately, something I was really hoping would happen, but hasn't. As you can see, the cores are the same between both cards. With that said, while obviously we do know that it goes up to 16 gigabytes of memory now, there is one added thing that the XT model gets, and that is slightly higher clocks. You can see it goes from 2.25 gigahertz to 2.47 gigahertz in the game clock, and then in boost clock it goes from 2.66 to 2.76. Finally, and this is obviously one negative, is that it does get all the way up to 190 watts. Oh, and now the display port is all just going to be 2.1 rather than 1.4a or 2.1. Moving on, we have more performance numbers, and as you can see here, this is comparing the 7600 to the 7600 XT, also the 2060, but kind of forget about that. Obviously, it's going to be significantly faster than that, but... Over here in 1440p, one thing you'll notice is that it is a clear difference in performance. And not just the difference from, we obviously know that the clocks are a little bit higher, but I'd argue that it's extremely clear that this is not just from higher clocks, especially when we look at things like Forza Horizon 5, which means the only other answer is the jump from 8 gigabytes to 16. And coincidentally enough, Forza Horizon 5 is known for being a memory hog. So for anyone who was thinking that 8 gigabytes definitely is plenty for this performance range, well, it doesn't look to be the case. Of course, this is a little bit ironic given AMD was making that claim when they released the regular 7600, but clearly it isn't true, at least at 1440p in some of these games. With that said, as more and more games are coming out, it definitely seems like they're requiring more and more VRAM, and it certainly doesn't look like 8 gigabytes of VRAM is really going to be enough for much longer. So much so that even at 1080p, this could end up being the case. Moving on from here, we can see that this GPU is actually getting Fluid Motion Frames and Hyper RX, and it's actually going to be getting it on release. Remember that Fluid Motion Frames, unlike Super Resolution 3, is actually a driver level frame generation. So all you have to do is just turn it on in the driver if your AMD GPU supports it, and you'll get frame generation in just about every game. And we can actually see this happening right here in this slide. As you can see, this is comparing the RX 76 600 XT to the RTX 4060. And when we look at these games, so this right here, this is just regular rasterization, and we do see that they're fairly close. Ever so often the 4060 will come back and win, then AMD will win in others. So it's pretty neck and neck. This is really one of the only games where there's a big difference. But when we then start doing things like turning on DLSS3, frame generation, as well as AFMR, and once again, this is one of the benefits, you'll notice these games over here, the only ones that they're showing with FSR3, but if we look at fluid motion frames, because it's a driver level, it works in way more games, so they're able to compare these as well. And I will say one thing that's pretty wild, and something I do think people should look at when this card comes out, is that you can see this right here does have frame generation, but so does this, and yet it's a huge difference. Even though both of these are on quality mode, it gets way more FPS. And ultimately, with frame generation on AMD side, it does look like it ends up being quite a bit of a winner versus the 4060. Of course, with that said, as we've seen before, it does look like DLSS 3 
is better quality than FSR, so you really could be deciding between more frames or better quality. Though of course, more testing is needed to really find out. And next up, we have 1440p, and you can see, once again, especially when you turn on frame generation from AMD, as well as fluid motion frames, it looks like AMD really comes out on top. Of course, you may notice that some of these games don't have DLSS3 frame generation, and there is kind of where the driver level frame generation that AMD has really helps them out. But if all you really care about is rasterization, it's pretty clear that these are very similar. Next, as you can see right here, it looks like AMD is working really hard on both encoding and video upscaling. Looks pretty good to my eyes, not as good as native or anything like that, I would argue, but it certainly does look nice. And finally, we have release date and price. And as you can see, the 7600 XT is set to come January 24th for $329. Now that obviously is quite a bit more than the regular 7600, but it's not as bad as the $100 jump you get with the 4060 Ti going from eight gigabytes to 16. And in terms of price, it is really close to the 4060, so you really have to ask yourself, do you want 16 gigabytes with not as good ray tracing and things like that, or do you want eight gigabytes with better ray tracing and the features that Nvidia offers? One thing I will point out, if you remember back here, here, it gets up to 190 watt total board power, while NVIDIA's 4060 is significantly less at 115. So that is one good thing on NVIDIA's 4060 side, but with it having 16 gigabytes, I definitely say that that's a big plus for AMD. So while that does it for today, what do you think about AMD's new mid-range GPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, have a great day.